The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Don't adjust your screen. There is nothing wrong. You are about to enter a world where the very concept of time is rendered obsolete by the sheer power of entertainment. You're about to enter the Bogus Hour. And welcome to this episode of The Bogus Hour. My guest for the entire show, he's an actor, he's a writer, he's a producer, he's a funny guy and he's a good friend of mine. He is Mark Resnick. rate has more than doubled since you took office, allowing big business to pay their employees next to nothing without answering to anyone. What is your administration doing to remedy the situation? We have a five-point program that deals with that issue primarily. I have always stood behind and I will continue to stand by hard-working Bostonians that have been forced to accept these unlawful wages due to the current job market. Next question. Mayor, are you aware that Stanton Creed is linked to multiple accusations of murder, hostile intimidation, blackmail, and fraud. So, Mayor, what is your no, 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 no. Stan Creed is an innocent man. Who? You guys, your media syndicates, have this evil plan to tarnish his good name? I mean, we stand by a saying here in Boston, maybe you've heard of it, innocent until proven guilty. And Mr. Creed, has never been found guilty of anything. He's never even been arrested. So will you please? Excuse me. And here I am with actor, screenwriter, director, Mark Resnick, direct from Florida. Direct from Florida. Yes, Greg. This is the land of um, very bad toes and open-toed shoes. It's not a good combination. It's very, very bad. Especially during that, you know, that early bird special. You're going out to eat, and these ladies are wearing the open... Please, oh, don't no. get me going. That's not, good. <laughs> not a good thing. Does that ruin your Ponderosa experience? It's not the Ponderosa experience. It's the, it's the, um, it's the sunset menu, you oh. know. <laughs> because you get the salad and the entree and the coffee with the dessert, $9.99. And that's what mom likes to do. So. The blue plate for the blue hairs. There, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Anyway, uh, very, thank you very much for having me on. My honor. Well, it was a pleasure to have you on. I've always uh, 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 known you uh, uh, for these past uh, what, year and a half. A <laughs> couple of years. A couple of years couple now. Of years. Yeah, sure. And uh, been looking forward to having you on the show and finally get you here. Finally got you around town. I appreciate that. So let's talk much. about what you are up to these days. What You're in I town to? for a premiere. I am in town, yes. We have the premiere of District C11 which is a uh, Camp Nine Films production. Uh, Camp Nine Films is a, is a film company run by Mr. Wes Williams II. This is my second um, uh, program that I'm doing with him. This is a feature. The first film I did with him was a short film, Rosie's Diner, which uh, came out about three years ago. And this is his first feature. And um, I play a very, very bad man. In this, in this film, I play I play the mayor of Boston um, in the not too distant future, um, and he's a coke snorting, whore mongering, corrupt <laughs> sort of a guy. And uh, I don't know, Greg, you uh, you know me, I'm a pretty nice guy, right? You are. Just, you're a nice, cast laid these, back, easy going people, guy. But I don't know. Some they see something in me that just screams just evil. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that premieres uh, Thursday night in. Um, in Boston, that should that should be a lot of fun. Tell me about the plot of the movie. Uh, well, we have somewhat of a dystopian society, the collapse of the information high, highway, 
leads to uh, anarchy, um, you know, in individual cities. And uh, the city of Boston is 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 run by this corrupt mayor. And your name? A, um, mayor Ballin, who is controlled by the evil crime boss, um, you know, because of the, the money and the girls and the drugs. And um, you've got a couple of uh, police officers in the District C-11 precinct. Um, one is fighting for the good, one is fighting for the evil, and they clash. Uh, I'm not going to tell you who wins. Okay. I'm not sure who wins, actually. And so it's down premiering down. this week down in Boston. Yes, yes, sir. And uh, then supposedly it's going on some sort of uh, worldwide distribution, maybe on an Amazon platform or something to, you know, uh, of that nature, but we'll, we'll find out. Is it considered uh, science fiction? <sighs> okay. Or what would you consider it? It's a, it's a crime. It's a crime film. You got the good guys, you got the bad guys, um, some pretty girls, some drugs and violence, and um, very interested to see how it turns out. Of course, you know, you put, the, you put, you put a wrap on these things a year and a half, two years back, and um, you know, now it comes to fruition, so we'll see. we'll see how they did. Cool. You said this was your second foray with Camp Nine Films. Tell me about the short film you yes, did. Yes, Rosie's Diner was a was a short little uh, supernatural kind of a thing, and I played uh, Vinny, the uh, the uh, chef at Rosie's Diner, and Rosie was a waitress there who who comes into contact with this mysterious gentleman, and um, it it was sort of like a Twilight Zone sort of an episodic little bit. That was a lot of fun. That was one of my first um, more uh, legitimate uh, films that I did and just met, you know, Camp Nine, great family, a lot of friends that I'm still very, very close with. And I'm, I'm, I've been fortunate. He asked me to come back uh, and do this role. And, and it, was, it was just a lot of fun. So how do you like playing a, a heavy uh, a, a bad guy? Well, I'm always playing a heavy guy. <laughs> you know, I got the memo, we're dark, right? So, you know, they say the camera puts on 15 pounds. Does the black take five off? It kind 20, of bounces 30. Off 20, 30. Oh, cool. Yeah. You know what? I, I enjoy it. This particular one was a lot of fun. Um, he gives me the license to do quite a bit of ad-libbing. And um, I think we put, we put out some, some, very good, some very good material. And I work with a couple of very close friends in there. And... Um, where do they do most of the filming? In and around Boston. Yeah. There's a place called The Factory just uh, right outside the city there, yeah. um, which is somewhat of a mm, studio. It's a stretch. Um, there was, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Red Hat restaurant yeah. in downtown Boston. Oh, yeah, there's sure. There's a scene in there and around there, right on the streets. Um, That's around the old Scully Square, I believe. Yeah, uh -huh. sure. So there's some good... Uh, Good bad guy karma from that neck of the woods. There you there. Go. That was the old red light district back in the day. Okay. So, uh, what was your first acting gig? My first acting gig. Why don't you actually? Why don't you? Why don't you start out where you're actually from? You're not actually a, a New Hampshire dude. I'm not. I'm originally from New York, and uh, Long, Long Island, born and bred, and I escaped <laughs> the rat race, the douchebags. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I love my New York, my New York peeps. <laughs> now I escaped up really the cost of living. I got my, I got caught up in the whole Big Short, you know, thing, right. and uh, we escaped up to New Hampshire because we had spent some summers up here. Um, just love the beauty and and the people, very laid back, um, and we came up here uh, about four years ago, and. Um, I had studied acting in earnest as a as an older teenager, and then you know, I got married and went to work. And three kids later, you know, at fifty, I was kind of perusing uh, Craigslist, and I saw a call for a student film out of um, Bedford, Manchester, Hooksett, Milford, uh, Amherst, over there in New Hampshire, Keene, Dover, Keene. Thank oh, you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> It was Keene State, and oh, okay. um, I, I went and I did a couple of days on set with them. It was a movie called Annex, and um, 
what got me was when I saw the trailer for this for this film, the quality was so beautiful, and I'm thinking, wow, these kids, they were kids. They sure. were putting a beautiful film. I'm like, I can get used to this, and I kind of, you know, there was a, still yet a little bit of a burning ember, you know, within me. It, it ignited, and I just started putting myself up for, for more for more roles, and they just started coming. So. Now, did you do any theater when you were in school? Yeah, I was, um, sure. Youth group, theater, camp theater. Ah, uh, yes. Know, um, and that's really where most of my work was, was on the stage, and I really didn't get in front of a camera until, you know, the ripe old age of 50. You know, George Carlin actually began his acting career, performing career in New Hampshire over at Spofford Lake. He, I did not was, know He that. had summer camped up there. Really? And so the first time that he performed was, a, you know, summer camp theater. Wow. And so when he passed away, his ashes were sprinkled in Spofford, or some of his ashes were sprinkled in Spofford Lake. So. No kidding. Yeah, so the, a lot of people have that early. I, I, I never did theater in school. I was always, I, I liked stand-up comedy. Theater always freaked me out because other people had to rely on you to do your it's true. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> to do your work. And that right. was so how long ago was that when you first started with the stand up? Uh I first started the stand up in uh the fall of ninety four, so it's been a while now. It has been a while. Yeah, and then within a couple of years a friend of mine from New Hampshire, a comic named Mike Cody, had uh been done had done some work with an a, a, a agency out of Manchester. Right. And so I ended up you know, sending my headshot and introducing myself. Nice. And the first casting they called me for, uh, I got. It was a, it was you know, it was an office party, and I was the guy that was photocopying my butt at the office party. Figures, yeah, <laughs> typecast. Didn't have to show anything, mind no, you. I've been, I've been doing stand up for about uh, thirty five years in my head. <laughs> Does that not count? It's it, not really it, standing it's, up. It's right. more like a. Yeah, yeah, it's it's well, it's the precursor to it. I mean, you have to. <laughs> Have the mind of, a, of That's you know. correct. Of, and sure, being in New York, I'm sure you grew up watching uh, and, and seeing lots and lots of the great uh, performers and entertainers of the, of the, oh, of the time. My goodness, I, I remember going, I, seeing uh, Eddie Murphy as a 16-year-old kid. Right. You know, out there on Long Island and, and um, um, you know, Seinfeld. And, yeah, I saw, you know, all the, all the big guys, right? Sure. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I definitely have that sick, demented, <laughs> whack head of mine. You know, maybe one day I'll share it with uh, with a room full of drunkards. Yeah, you can. <laughs> there's there's a the couple of avenues now too. There's you know you could just do something as, as simple as a YouTube video, right? Or you could also you know compose a story because there's also a whole new avenue uh, or resurgence in storytelling, which is you know uh, you know. Stand up with the edges softened around a little bit more of a, I guess, a, an attentive audience and, and willing to give you a little bit more time to get to the, right, get to the punch, right. But well, still the same premise: you, people watching and listening to you. Yeah. And, so and, I've been, I've I've sort of been channeling that through through writing. I've been doing doing a bunch of writing with with uh, short films. I've got several in the works, and um, that's been a good outlet for me. And uh, you know. So when it's just me and my, you know, laptop, <laughs> it's nothing to, to get embarrassed about until I send it off to somebody to check it out. <laughs> Look what and I they, wrote. And they come back to me and they say, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> and I tell them, I <laughs> Anyway, but yeah, so I, I've, been, um, I've been channeling that comedy into my writing because every time they pull me into a film, it's just a bad, bad guy. So we have now on the heels of District C11, yes. we have Spin the Plate, which, interestingly enough, not really that interesting, but sort of seated in um, Nashua. Right. Uh, written, uh, this is based on a novel written by a, a lovely woman by the name of Donna Anastasi. The novel has won many accolades and, and awards, and her husband, Tom, um, then turned it into a screenplay and produced this film, which was directed by uh, my good friend Eric Eastman, also an actor. That, that was his first uh, foray into directing. And there I play this. This film explores um, a, a, a very sick man. Uh, a Abusive. Yeah, an abu uh, uh, a, a woman that grows up 
and now has to confront um, her father, who sexually molested Oof, her. Yeah. You know, as a very very young girl, and um, you know, follows through with the prosecution, and um, it was a very very dramatic, very intense intense film. And uh, I I play the father again, cast as a very very bad man, a heck of a villain, heck of a villain, <laughs> um, and. The way I approached that was uh, I did not want to play the quintessential sleazy, you know, pedophile kind of right. caricature. I really dug deep and explored the, the notion that here you have a father who is indeed um, loving, nurturing, caring, yet very, very, very sick. So I kind of put those two together and feedback I got from the cast and crew and director was, was, was very, very positive. So um, that's thrilling. thrilling yeah, that's, to hear, that's you know? very, uh, it's, it's interesting to see how people are able to make themselves into different characters and then how you, you're able to get response. And I remember just growing up seeing different character actors and so, you know a lot of times ones that were the, the, the repeated villains and I was like oh man they're able yeah. to make me absolutely loathe them you know and, and it's totally apart from who they are as a person it's this character this world they're able to inhabit and it's and it's a, it's quite a talent to be able to make to get that almost that gut response out of people through your your ability to act my my feeling is is if you could just be truthful to the material you know and that truth has to come from within yourself Know, somehow you need to be you need to be believable, and um, if you're believable, then that's gonna you know carry over to the to the viewer. Right, and that's to be released sometime soon. I hope. Soon. I, I think uh, I would imagine sometime by the end of the summer. And is that a full length? That is a full length feature. Yeah. Wow. And again, a lot of um, I work with a lot of the same people um, from film to film, so it's very interesting to. Um, you know, be in, in these ensembles, you know, yeah. with, with sort of modular parts. Sure. You know? So uh, that's, that, that's kind of cool. It's the community thing, which is really, you know, which has really been special for me. Right. Now, you were almost cast as Governor LePage, or you were cast as Governor LePage I was, in a satire video. I was. But circumstances that, in your life yeah, precluded well, you from doing that. That's correct. We needed to, we needed to uh, kind of pick up and move and take, take care of mom, which is very cool and noble and wonderful, right. rewarding kind of a thing to do, you know. And on you're, the one hand, on the other hand, it's like, you know, <laughs> kind of makes me crazy. But, yeah, so I had to kind of step out of that. And, um, Your I heard, absence left I, an opening. Yeah, I heard that the guy that um, that understudied me just, just did a bang-up job. <laughs> yeah, you do. And, and, again, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I've told you before, I don't think I could have done <laughs> as good a job as you because you just knocked that out of the park. Yeah, I was our buddy Rick. Uh, uh, yeah, Rick, uh, Rick Dumont and Sweaty Turtle Productions. Yes, and uh, Robbie Michelson, and uh, right. it was quite a quite an entertaining thing. And it was fun to to really do physical comedy because I grew up watching a lot of physical comedy, whether it was the Three Stooges or Abbott and Costello, right? Uh, Laurel and Hardy, you know that kind of that kind of comedy was essentially what was underpinning the whole production of that sure. Paul Pages Empire video. And let's so. face it. At, you know, as as these um, overgrown children, when do we really get the opportunity to, you know, <laughs> to kind of play act all that stuff that we grew up admiring? Flip off some college students and catch a ride <laughs> yeah. in a pedicab. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you showed some moves in there, bro. Uh, yeah, you, I, I still, I, I think I still got it. Uh, I still got some. Too bad. I still got some motion there. <laughs> So we're running uh, low on time. Why don't you tell me what you're working on now? What am I working on now? Well, I've got a, I, I'm constantly writing. It's, um, it's sort of been a saving grace for me. Um, I always have something to go back to. And, um, so I am going to get a film into production this summer. It's called Forbidden Fruit. Um, it explores, it, it's about a gentleman that has grown up in a conservative sect of a particular religion I'm not going to mention specifically, but his last name is Rabinowitz, so you can draw <laughs> your own conclusions. Anyway, this, is, this man has, has grown up in a certain you know, paradigm of, of belief and structure 
and rules and commandments, and yet he goes out in his everyday life, and 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 he's he has to he has to contend with these temptations um, that conflict with his his belief system, and he ends up he go, goes to some type of an epiphany, and he comes out with a very uh, strong sense of um, his spirituality and respect not only for the uh, the religious template that he he grew up within yep. um, but a, a respect for each and every other religion and basically comes out you know it's every religion has their rules and you do you don't do but you know bottom line is just like don't be a douche and you know everything <laughs> and everything is okay yeah but it seems to me, that a lot of those, you know, narrow boxes that people were put into had, you know, reasons at the time. Of and course. That, and, that, and that as, you know, time goes on and science and technology and things have created new things that, you know, some of the, the old strictures, you know, against things that would probably have killed you are not necessarily as applicable now. Exactly and so, correct, which is essentially, you know, the... the um which is, is the seed of, of conservative Judaism versus practicing Orthodox, and there are several different um, very observant um, sects of Judaism. Right. Conservative Ju- Judaism is based on the notion of evolving with society, evolving with technology, and how now does well, you know, do all these commandments fit into... To our life, so who you know? Who's going to say? Sure. This rabbi, that rabbi, that guy, this guy. Essentially, I, I think what, what I through my exploration came down to, you know, it's really got to be a very personal uh, thing. Thing. <laughs> thing. So, so there's that. Is there any any other thing? Is there anything that you you dream to to work on? You have any anything that? No, you know, thing? I mean, yeah, I want to be a big, famous, rich. Movie? No, it's not. I, I want to continue to make good art, as kind of oaky as that sounds. Sure. Really, I want to. I want to do some good writing. I want to direct. Uh, my first project is that'll be this Forbidden Fruit, and. Um, and is that is how, is that going to be a short film? Is that going to be a. It's kind of, yeah, it's short. It's short. It's 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 it's, it's short. Uh, it's a long short, but it's a short. <laughs> so it's longer than short, but shorter category. than long. Some some film festivals will, you know, just say it's too long for their short film category. So it'll be an epic length short film. Uh, correct, correct. <laughs> so you know, that's my hope is to get this thing produced, done, and have somebody say, "Oh, yeah, pretty good." Excellent. Um, so we'll see. We'll see where that takes me. But I'm not, you know, I'm not. Laying down all my money on, on uh, I don't know. Can we cut that right there? I don't like the way that last two, those last two minutes cut. went. Cut. Cut. So, yeah. So I want to continue to, to find projects to work in and, and do good work and, and write and make good work and um, see where that takes me. Well, Mark Resnick. Yes, Greg Bogus. Actor, screenwriter, director to be. Director to be. I Thanks. did direct a music video. Ah, that we entered we into a, um, it was a contest for a, um, for some band. You can cut that part too. Because <laughs> <laughs> the brain farts don't work so well on camera. <laughs> we'll fix it in post, we'll as they fix say. It in post. So thanks for coming on the Bogus Hour. It seems like time has flown. Yeah. And we've uh, reached the end of our interview. And cool. Good luck at your premiere. Thanks, man. And I good luck in the there. future, and thanks for coming on the Bowie right, Sour, buddy. Mr. Mark Resnick. All right. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. If you or someone you know would like to be a guest on the Bogus Hour, email us here at thebogushour at gmail.com. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.